In this video, let's have a look at how to configure an IP address on a Cisco router. And just to remind you from the first few videos that we've already done in this series, each of these computers or PCs has an IP address in the same subnet. So each IP address is 10.1.1. something with a slash 24. And if you need more information about subnetting as well, there's a link on the video here that'll take you to subnetting and IP addressing. So this PC over here has IP address 1.10. This one has 1 to 20, that one has 1 to 30, and that one has 1 to 40. And to test connectivity on each of these things, we can go into the desktop, open up a command prompt, and from here we can test that we can ping all the other computers. So can you ping yourself? Yes, that works just fine. Can we ping the other three machines? Yes, that one works. That one works. And finally, that one works. So they're all in the same subnet. They're all in the same logical network. They're all in the same physical network. We haven't configured anything to do with VLANs yet. So it's one big flat network. But now this router needs to have an IP address on it so we can ping it. And it can ping us. And then, of course, we can use that as our default gateway to be able to get to other networks moving forward. So that said, let's go into this router here. Select it. Go to the CLI. Press enter to get started. And as we saw on the video video number two on how to navigate and how to set up the host names. Let me remind you that we need to be in enable mode. That's privileged mode to be able to get into um, a higher state of privilege to be able to do configuration. But even at this level, we cannot configure anything. So we need to be inside configuration terminal. Now, the trick with this is if I know what the interface's name is, then it's quite easy for me to go and configure it. Now, luckily for me on Packet Tracer, I can find out quick, quite quickly what it is that I actually have, either by looking at the interfaces that I have, go to the configuration, and I can see the interfaces right over here. Um, there's numerous ways that I can achieve this through Packet Tracer. However, if I wasn't on Packet Tracer, and this was a real router, there's two ways. Physically go and look, right? So go and inspect the router to see what it is. Or alternatively, you can run the command show IP interface brief, which I briefly mentioned in video two. Now show IP interface brief will show me all the interfaces that I currently have, what their status happens to be. And in this case here, you can see there are administratively down and the protocol is down. So what this means to me right now is the admin down or the administratively down means that that interface is shut. So the very first thing I have to do is go and unshut those interfaces so they can become active and live. So I need to be in configuration terminal connect to the interface that I wish to go and change. And remembering that theoretically, these two interfaces have a physical cable coming out of them, right? A cat five or a cat six or cat seven cable, whatever that might be ethernet, but it's going to have a ethernet cable plugged into it. Now also a standard that I've always used, and I mentioned this in video one, is I always make sure as much as I humanly can that the zero interfaces point to the outside of the network and the one interfaces point to the inside. So using the word and the play on the word of outside and inside, outside, zero, inside, I, or one. So that said, I wanna go into interface, fast ethernet. Now remember, you don't have to type it everything. You can abbreviate. So is it enough? Hit tab and you'll see if it'll order complete for you. So interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. I'm gonna say no shut. And that says, don't shut the interface, so bring it back up again. Then there's two ways for me to get into the other interface. I can either go there directly by typing interface fast ethernet, but you'll see the tab won't auto complete for me because in this mode, it doesn't know what interface is. So it doesn't know what this command interface is. I'm tabbing here, but it's not allowing me to do anything. So if I needed help with the auto completion, I would have to exit a level then type interface fast ethernet and that would work. But just to show you that this would work if I did know, so if I was already in interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, and then I went to interface fast ethernet zero slash one, it does actually change. The gotcha here is nowhere here can I see that I actually have changed interface. There's no way in this indication that says, hey, you were in zero, now you're in one. The only way I know that this worked is because it didn't give me an error message when I typed that. So because it, accepted the command, didn't give me an error message, it's safe to say that I am actually in the correct interface. 
So what I want to do here is also say no shut, and that brings the interface up, and you'll see that it just went green. So green over here, still orange over here, and that's due to spanning tree. We'll get into the details of what that is. Not in this video, but we certainly shall go into the details of spanning tree. And that's it, our interface is now live. So if I wanted to have a look at this in the show IP interface brief, let me show you something here. If I do show IP interface brief, and I pressed in enter, it's gonna give me an error message again because I'm in the wrong level to type that kind of command. So if I type show IP interface brief, it goes, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. The reason for this is, is I'm in the wrong mode. Now there's two ways to fix this. The one is to exit all the levels until I'm back in privileged mode. Or here's a little trick, hit the up arrow to type the command again. And right at the beginning of that, put the word do. Do show IP interface brief. You're telling it to do the command in the right place. And it accepts that command without a problem. So when I type that command, I can now see that fast ethernet 00, the status is up, the protocol is down. And here I can see that fast ethernet 0 slash 1, the status is up, the protocol is up. What this indicates to me here with the protocol being down is that there's something wrong with the cable or there's something wrong with what it's plugged into. Well, yeah, there's nothing plugged into it. This router here only has one cable and it goes to the switch. So that other interface, which we will use at some point, will go somewhere else. But right now there is no cable, which is why it's showing a down status. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, however, well, that does have an up status. That says to me that the interface has been opened and the protocol is working, which means there is some kind of communication happening over this wire. So let's exit a couple layers out of here real quick. First thing I want to do here is let's try and ping. We already know that ping worked between all of these computers. So if I said I'd like to ping 10.1.1.10, and we know that that works, on the router it doesn't. And the reason for that is this router doesn't have an IP address. So without having its own IP, it is impossible for it to communicate with anybody else. So we have to give it an IP address. However, if I type a command called show CDP neighbors, I do see a neighbor on my interface. This is a protocol, a Cisco predominant protocol. So Cisco discovery protocol is what it stands for, CDP. And what this does is it allows Cisco devices to send a message over the wire, regardless of protocol, regardless of whether it has an IP address. It broadcasts this message over the actual interfaces to announce its um, the fact that it exists to other devices on that network. So the switch would be advertising to the router, the router would be advertising to the switch. And this is a really useful command for me to be able to identify how things are connected. So I can see that the switch is connected on my, the local interface, on my FOST Ethernet 0 slash 1. On the switch, it's plugged into Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. So here I know that Gig 01 is plugged into the router, and the router is using Gig 01, sorry, FOST Ethernet 01 to plug into the gig on the switch. So there is communication. And by the way, if I refresh, you'll see this hold down time is a countdown, right? So it's counting down in seconds. Every 60 seconds, CDP will send another message. And as long as I'm getting a message every 60 seconds, I will keep that device inside my database. So you'll see if I did continue doing this until it went down to 120 seconds, it'd go back up to 180 seconds. And so it would keep on going. So that's CDP. So I still can't communicate because I don't have an IP address. So the next thing I'm going to need to do here is go into configuration terminal, go into the interface, so interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and now give it an IP. The command for that is as simple as IP address. Now it's not IP add. I hear people say this a lot, oh, I'm adding an IP. It's not add. Add is just the abbreviated version of address. So it's IP address, but yes, we tend to abbreviate to IP add. So we specify IP address. What is the IP address I want to have? So 10.1.1 is the same subnet as all of these PCs. 10.1.1.1, I'm the very first device and I'm the default gateway for this entire network. And you can choose if you want that to be one or any other number as long as it's in that same subnet. And the next thing I have to do is tell it, and by the way, if you're not sure, you can always question mark things. So question mark and it says, hey, you got to tell me what the subnet mask is. Well, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, which is a slash 24. 
And again, if you're not familiar with CIDR and classless addresses and so forth, I'll leave a link on the video here for you to go and check out a video that will go through all those details for you as well. So IP add, IP address, 10111-255-255-2550, press enter. No error message, perfect. Next thing to do, test it. So from here, if we now try and ping 10.1.1.10, remember we did try ping that not too long ago, but this time it should actually work. Now, if you're not familiar with reading the ping statements here, a period is a failure and an exclamation mark is a success. So here you will see that there was only 80% success or four out of five. Never worry if the very first ping fails and the rest go through, but do make sure that you test it again. So let me explain why. If I test it again, you'll see all five worked. Excellent. To prove that this is really not a problem, I can say ping, protocols uh, IP, IP address is 10.1.1.10, repeat count, let's do it a thousand times and just select defaults for all of those. Not a single packet drop, right? There's not a single failure. The reason why this very first one failed was ARP, address resolution protocol, had to identify and resolve the MAC address of that device first before it was able to actually communicate with it. The time it took for it to get all that information by doing broadcasts, doing the whole ARP query, that took longer than the timeout of that ping, which is why the first one failed. But there is zero problem with this network. So don't immediately assume that because it's 80% that there's a problem in the network. It's not. It was purely an ARP query. So, and this is 100% perfect now. We can break um, this ping sequence. Uh, please break. Come on. There we go. Control shift six will break you out of those kinds of uh, endless loops. So the same principle would apply then if I try to ping 10.1.1.20. I haven't communicated with it either. First failed, rest was successful. If I try ping 10.30, first failed, rest succeed. And same again for the 40, first one will fail, rest of them will succeed. And this is always due to that op query initially. Right, so that's where that's going to come from and why it's got that first delay. That's it. You now have an IP address on a router that is communicating with the computers. And the computers, of course, can now go to the command prompts. And from here, they should be able to ping 10.1.1.1. They should be able to ping the router immediately. Now, the first ping from the, the PC didn't fail, by the way, because the op works both ways. So when the router discovered the PC, the PC discovered the router. So only the first ping on either side would be um, a failure, but um, not there afterwards. So, and this is now 100% happy days and good to go. Excellent. So now that we've got communication between these things, the next thing we can then go ahead and do is on our computers is go to the configuration of the fast ethernet. And here we've had our IP address, which we made static. We can go and change that in, in a later session. Um, We've got the right IP address, we've got the right subnet mask, so we're happy with all of that configuration. Here's what we now want to have a look at is here's a gateway. We don't have a gateway. The gateway tells me how do I get to a network that's not mine. So if I'm not connecting to something that is in the 10.1.1. something network, how would I get there? And the idea of the default gateway is for me to say, hey, if you want to get to any other network, go ask this guy, he'll help you. And that guy would be this router. So this router would then say, yeah, I know how to get to other networks. Now, in this particular case, there isn't. There is no other networks. There's no other communication. There's nowhere to go. But at some point, that will be their default gateway. And they will all point to that device over there. Now, I'm not going to do the configuration now for a good reason. We're going to have to go through that again when we get into the whole idea of how to route and how to get communications to the other side. That's it for this video. I um, hope it helped out with understanding some of the basics within Cisco and putting an IP address on. If there's anything that you didn't understand, please leave in the comments. If there's any questions you have or you want me to go into detail on other things, um, hopefully it's covered in one of our other videos, but otherwise I'm happy to answer any questions you leave inside the comments. And if this was of any use to you, please go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. We appreciate it and have a great day.